Wait, what? Four 18650s and 300 watts? Yeah, the RX 300. Welcome to the Vapor Trail channel. I'm Tony. It's nearing the end of 2016 and I'm getting some questions about are you going to do a best of 2016 and I gotta tell I just I don't really think I'm gonna do that. I mean it seems like everybody else has already done one and I'm not one to really follow the pack. Plus I haven't really tried every single item that's out there so I don't think it's fair for me to give you my opinion on what the best of 2016 is. I mean who am I to say anyways I'm just a dude with the YouTube channel right? I mean there is you know my number one vape that I use more than anything else is one that's probably not even on your radar. It's the the Lost Vape Halcyon. It's the Squonker. I love that thing. I use it every single day with Mod Milk Pink uh, from you know Mod Milk E-Liquid and you know so I don't know. We probably won't see a best of 2016 for me but I can tell you that Wismec has had a great year, have they not? Well, they've got their Rulo RX 300 out now, and this thing, it's like a car battery. It's either that or, you know, it could be used to bludgeon somebody with. I mean, this this is a big, big mod. I don't see you carrying it around in your pocket. Uh, I just recently got some Gorilla Straps, which I'm going to show here on the channel uh, from the folks at Gorilla Straps, and it's not even something you want to fit in there. I mean, it's, it's heavy. Without the batteries in it, it's not all that heavy. You put the batteries in it, and it is definitely heavy. It's more like a coffee table type mod, you know? Maybe you're going over to a friend's cook out you want something that you'll have batteries for sure for the entire night or maybe you just want to have something around the house that always has batteries charged and this might be a good option for you i mean listen it's good quality we know that it's just super big i don't see the practicality of this thing in very many applications i also have this tank on here it is the rue tank from jbo and wismec and we're going to take a quick look at that i'm not going to show you the rta deck on here because it's kind of complicated as far as it goes in here but you'll see what i'm talking about let's go ahead and dig in and let me show it to you okay so e-liquid that we're using today is called ads that's all day strawberry it's from the oppressed vapor that's opvapor.com and all the warnings and stuff over here it is basically a strawberry and a cool thing about it is that a portion of all the proceeds from this will go to advocacy groups and i think that's really great now philip approached me and said hey i'd like you to check this out i know you like the strawberry stuff like pink from mod milk which is still my favorite his goal with this was to make a strawberry that wasn't so in your face that you couldn't vape it all day so it's all day strawberry got another bottle around here i couldn't find it that was already open been dripping this and and tasted it in a tank and it's it's pretty good so we've got the root tank from wismec and the rulo rx 300 let's just quickly go over this root tank this is what i'm going to be using to Today with the Rulo RX 300. I haven't used this one yet, so this will be the first time I'm using it. I'm going to use it with the coil that comes with it. It also has a RTA deck, which this may require a separate video altogether for this, but there's the top of it. Opens up, it's top filling. If you hear dinging bells, that's because my dog Luke is over in the other room watching the prices right. For whatever reason, that calms him down. Let me take off the base. And these fancy coils, they even have J-Bo's name stenciled right into it. It's not stenciled, it's laser cut through it. So those are for juice flow. More holes over there. And it's just a giant, giant coil. So it's parallel wrapped. The rating on this, it says it's a RX triple. It's 0 0.15 ohms. 60 to 150 watts so that's the coil that we're going to use inside of the base and you'll notice those little screws over there set screws that screw into there that's because when you put the rta deck inside of this you literally have to take off this piece then put the rta deck in there and screw it in so like i say we may have to do a separate video just on this tank and at least show you the rta deck on it and then for this portion the glass just pops off of here just like that put this back down in there there we go so I'm going to fill this up and let it sit while we look at the rest of the stuff. Put the top back on there. Use one of my little water bottle stands. All I do is just drill a hole in those. It works perfectly. Now, unlike most tanks, this does come with a quick guide. It kind of explains all the different parts and how you'd have to do it. You see right there, you have to take those screws out of the base in order to put that RTA deck inside of there. Let's go ahead and show you the RTA deck. It does have a little bag of cotton in here. So you've got, you know, a Japanese organic cotton square. Then inside of this, we have a parts bag. You have coils inside of here that are ready to go for the uh, for the RTA deck. Lots of O-rings, some extra screws. And this right here looks to be a 510 adapter. Like I say, I haven't used this thing yet. Yeah, let's just see. So that came off of there. That goes on there. It's either just a stubbier tip. And I guess a 510 tip does kind of stick in there, but it's more of just a stubby tip. 
I gotta be honest, I think I like that better, so I'm gonna leave that on there. Also inside the parts box here, we have another coil, again with the j -Bow design on the side of it. And this one is a ceramic coil rated at 40 to 80 watts. Let's take a quick look at this RTA deck. So those little posts right there are going to screw into that base as you saw before. This leans over and touches the positive post. And that's the build deck. These are not spring loaded or anything. You just loosen up those screws and shove your wires underneath there. Of course, your wicks are gonna go right into those. So I am looking forward to using this one. I just haven't had time to do so. And I figure, well, let's go ahead and try out their coils. If we get some time, I'll do a build and we'll do an update on the tank. In case you're curious, here's what's inside the box and the specs on that. There's the rest of it. So here's the star of the show, the RX300. Show you the back of the box. That's what we've got inside there. This one's silver and there's a black version of it as well. And that's the mod. Look at this thing. Man, that is, wow. That is a big, big mod. Can't even, I can't even get my fingers all the way around it when I hold it in my fist here. Okay, now I'm hearing that. That sounded kind of funny. Just to give you a comparison, here is a standard box mod next to it. I mean, it's wow. That thing is crazy big. I don't even think I need to do a side by side with the original RX because it's just, it's, it's something all into its own. You know what I mean? It's got a big, beautiful screen on here. Before we look at the mod itself, let's go ahead and see what else is inside the box. Do have a manual inside the box. It's very easy to understand with lots of graphics. I'll leave that up for a second if you want to read that. But yeah, graphics. I like pictures. Pictures make things easier. Got a USB cable in here, which is data and power. And yes, you can charge the mod with the USB cable, but even inside the mod, it tells you that they prefer you not to do that. Yeah, micro USB port function. The USB port can be used for charging and upgrading firmware. It is better to take out the cells and charge them through an external charger. You also get a couple of 3M stickers in here that are, you know, brown leather instead of the black leather and a torn casing battery warning. All right, let's go over the RX300. Got stainless steel threads up here. These seem to be really secure. I know some people have complained about the threads on the RX200 and 200S. These seem to be very, very sturdy. I have a spring-loaded pin in there. Here's the bottom of it. Lots and lots of venting, at least one venting area for each battery. And they've got venting up here, which is probably more for the board than the batteries. Fire button with J-Bow's signature on it up and down buttons, USB port, again the leather inserts right there, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and show you the battery compartment. You got plus and minus on here to let you know which way to put them, and then inside, you also have the plus and minuses down there. So all you have to do is match up how you put the battery in with how it's indicated inside the casing. So the plus goes down, then the minus goes down. Then the plus goes down, and the minus goes down. And then all you have to do is flop that shut and it comes on automatically. Now, I don't know how secure this little latch is gonna be after some time, but it seems to be made of metal and it latches on there pretty well. So pop it on, slide it over, good to go. And that's the screen. It's a nice, big, beautiful screen, as I've mentioned before. It doesn't seem to be quite as bright as I'd like it to be, but it is big and beautiful. Got four batteries listed down here. Each one of those is individual, so they will tell you how your batteries are doing on balance. And if they're unbalanced, then the mod will tell you that's one of the warnings that it has. They changed the interface just a little bit on this. You've got your wattage right there. It's in power mode. That's the voltage from the batteries, ohms, puffs, and amps. Three clicks on the fire button will take you into the menu. And then it starts to blink up there. If you go this way on this, then it'll go down to the other thing down here. You can set your puffs. Then you can go here and change it from puffs to how many seconds you've used it. And that's really all you can do when you're in power mode. But one, two, three, the power starts to blink. And then if you hit this button, then you can scroll through the different ones. If you go to temp, then it's temp stainless steel right now. You see the SS right there. That's the wattage that it's set for, and that is the temperature. If you want to change the watts, then you'd go one, two, three, and then you'd go left, and then you go down to wattage, and you can change your wattage. Likewise, when you go left one time, then the stainless steel starts to flash, and you can go through Ni200, titanium, stainless steel. So now that's blinking up there. We can go through, you've got TCR, memory one. So it's pretty simple. Also, if you hit the fire button and the left button, then it'll go into stealth. Stealth on. Stealth off. And if you hit the, and if you hit the fire button and the right button, 
Then you can go in here and do logo mode if you want to put your logo on there. I haven't done that yet on this. Oh, also when you're in temp control mode, you can go down here and yeah, you can change your wattage. Then you can go right there and that's how you lock your resistance. So yeah, the menu is pretty much like, you know, previously as far as navigating through it and the actual functions of it. You just change the interface just a little bit. Yeah, for me, I typically prefer wattage mode. So that's what we're going to do is power. And yeah, this thing goes up to 300 watts. Let's see how fast it goes. You know, once you get up over 100 watts, it goes pretty quickly. So that is 300 watts right there. Again, this coil is rated at 60 to 150 watts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down to 60 watts. We're going to go off camera. We'll break it in a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll vape it. So yeah, it's big. No question about that. And it's really not the shape of the rouleau. The rouleau thing is the three batteries and the kind of triangular shape type thing, but it's part of the rouleau family. So uh, it's got the four batteries in here right now. I've got this at 60 watts. I've been vaping on this ADS for a little bit here. Let's go ahead and get a couple of vapes just to make sure we're all primed up and ready to go at 60 watts. This tank has enormous airflow. I really like the tank, actually. I was kind of surprised. I was like, eh, you know, tanks come and go. I see so many tanks, you know, show me something really good. I kind of like the tank a lot. The coils just look cool with that j thing on there. And this is the one that's rated at 60 to 150, and it performs really good at 60 watts. Yeah, it's, it's broken in really well. So let's go ahead and take this thing up. We're going to go to 75 watts. Man, that is fantastic at 75 watts. That is really nice. That's, you know, again, this is my first time trying this tank. Now, even though you can take these things to 150 watts, you know, a lot of these newer coils, I just, I don't do it. I'll find a nice sweet spot at lower and say, yeah, that's it, call it a day. But we're gonna take this up to 100. At 100 watts, it starts to get hot. That's a hot vape. Again, I don't know how who's going to go to a 300 watts on this thing, but hey, you know, you never know. I never thought we'd be going to 75 watts on a standard coil either. All right, we're at 150 watts now. Let's just go for at least one at 150. <coughs> okay, wow. <coughs> Oh, well, you can really hear it kick in at 150 watts. When it starts to fire, it's like, Whoa. all right, we'll do one more at 150. Yeah, that was like, you know, uh, half a second of a vape there. That's way, way too much for me. Geez, my voice is even wavering. All right, so now we're back down at 75 watts. Let's go ahead and get a vape at that. Yeah, I think 75 watts, 80 watts is probably about where I'll live with this coil that's in here. It works really well. The tank has great flavor. I know because I've been vaping this. I have a whole other bottle of this. It's about halfway full now. Uh, the all-day strawberry, so I know what it tastes like. The flavor is very good off of the tank. It gives a really good airy hit. Took this up to 80 watts now. Let's get a vape on that, and then we'll tell you about the e-liquid. Yeah, it's real good at 80 watts. The e-liquid is good. You know, I don't necessarily get sugar lips off of this, and I don't think he was intending for this one to have a sugar lips type thing. Sugar lips is when the flavor is left on your lips and tongue. It's got a nice mellow strawberry to it. It almost, almost seems like it might have like somewhere an undertone of custard or something, like an undertone of some kind of creaminess. As the name indicates, all day strawberry. It's meant to be an all-day vape, and it's not overpowering, yet it has plenty of flavor, and it does taste good. It doesn't beat out my Mod Milk for my favorite of the strawberry milks. It's just, you know, that's that's my favorite one. You know how that is, man. You find one that is yours, and you just stick with it. But I am vaping this. I enjoy it. And if you want to try it for yourself, everybody's tastes are a little bit different, so maybe this will be your favorite one. The best part about it is that the oppressed Vapor gives some of the profits from this to advocacy, and I think that's fantastic. I'm pretty sure that Brett over at mojovapor.com is going to be carrying this, so I'm going to put a link down in the description and a coupon code where you'll get 15% off of your purchases at mojovapor.com. So what's my verdict on this? I, you know, mm, I'm definitely not going to be carrying this around. I did take it out with me this weekend. We had a little Christmas party, and uh, I didn't want to have to worry about my batteries going dead, 
and well, it definitely lasted. I don't even know how long it took me to kill the batteries on this thing. I took them out and charged them when they're about half full. I'm guessing it might last two to three days, especially if you're just using it at home. It is a great coffee table vape and it's like one of those no must, no fuss. You don't have to worry about the batteries in it or anything like that. I guess the question is, do you really need a mod that is that large and takes that many batteries? It's pretty nice though. Hey, I want to thank you so much for 2016. You are awesome, man. I mean, we're at 93,000 subscribers right now. Yeah, this channel doesn't grow as fast as some of the other channels. I'm not a pretty girl. I don't do a video for every single item that comes out. I don't do temp control. So, hey, listen, if you like this channel, I really, really appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do click that subscribe button. Help me out with that. Also, all of your likes, comments, and shares and everything, you are fantastic. I wouldn't do this if it weren't for you. Got links down in the description for advocacy, also for the Guide to Vaping 2016 Best Of. And I've got links for all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. If you like pictures of vape products on beaches, well, I'm probably your guy for that. 2016 has been awesome. Hopefully 2017 will be as well. And hopefully you'll be there with me. That's going to do it for this episode. We'll catch you next time on the Vapor Trail channel.